our scripture today is Romans 12, uh, verses 9 through 22. Before I, I do speak it, I just wanted to, oh, do you want this pad? Do you need this? Or you want me to just put it over here? So, Pastor Albin uh, Suleimani, did I pronounce that correctly? God is good. All right, Pastor Albin is from Albania. So, Pastor Albin um, does ministry uh, out in Albania, and uh, he is going to share kind of a mission mission story. I got to meet Pastor Albin last week, and and John Hislop, our John, uh, said that said that this is really a, a must listen to. So I hope you all enjoy uh, Pastor Albin's presentation, um, and hopefully he can tell a little bit more about himself to us too. Excellent. So Romans chapter 12 uh, was the scripture John sent me. It's 9 through 22. Romans chapter 12, starting verse 9. He says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, Continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to, man, to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. Well, good morning, church. And happy Sabbath day. It's an honor and privilege to be here today with you all. And uh, as our brother said that I come from Albania, my name is Alban Suleimani. Uh, just before I came, actually, I... Uh, I was thinking where where can I come which which way to come because of, because of the covid all the line borders were blocked and no one could could go and fly to america so there was only two ways to get to america so it was turkey and serbia and I thought, okay, well, what, what can I choose? So I thought, well, Turkey has been in five century in Albania. So let's choose Turkey. And uh, I took, I chose Turkey to come here. And um, as I was entering in and then they checked my passport, they saw my surname, which is Suleimani. And then, you know, by five century in Albania, uh, the, the head of, uh, Turkey, he was there and uh, uh, he defeated uh, Albania for 500 years actually. And uh, so they thought, oh, this guy is like, you know, from Albania and he knows better about this stuff. So I said, well, they asked me, why are you going to America? Well, let me tell you, I said, I'm visiting some friends and visiting churches. So they thought something else. <laughs> So I stood what I was supposed to do, to visit churches and meet my friends. So again, my name is Alban Suleimani, and um, I'm married. I've got three little children and beautiful wife, which you're going to see in the video. And today I want to speak about, um, about my country. I hope that will work. I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Albania, the Republic of Albania is a country in uh, south eastern Actually, that's our flag. 
and um, Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's more. The Republic of Albania is a country in the southeastern Europe. It is located on the Adriatic, uh, on the Adriatic and uh, Onion Sea with the Mediterranean Sea and share land borders with Montenegro to the northeast, Kosovo to the northeast, North Macedonia to the east, Greece to the south and maritime borders with Greece, Montenegro, and Italy to the west. Tirana is the capital and largest city followed by Duras. So Duras is my city. Now, um, Albania, the population of Albania, it's about 2.5 million people. It's a small country actually, but it is also with a good resources, the major resources that they are there right now. They, um, they have the biggest port on mini uh, Balkan. That's the biggest port that we have. We have uh, gas also, which is diesel. That's the main, the main uh, resource that we have, Veg good vegetables. Um, and also a lot of other resources. It's an antique country, lots of castles too, in lots of cities. And uh, many tourists comes there and visit our country. It's really very beautiful country. So if you take um, a look on the internet to Albania, you will see a lot of beautiful places. So, the city, Duras, that's where I come from, is a Mediterranean Sea, which is by the beach. And um, there is many tourists also, they come there and visit my city. Next thing that I wanna speak about is, um, is about faith. The largest faith right now in Albania, it is Islam. Actually, I did some researches in, 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 the, in the internet, but that says 59, 60s. But I'm telling you that it is more than that. And Islam, it's like 60% Christianity, which includes the uh, uh, Catholic Orthodox and, I mean, Catholic, Romans Catholic and uh, Greek Orthodox. And un, unrich, it, it's uh, about 14%. Atheism is about 2.5. Uh, 2 and others, uh, which includes the Protestants too, they say uh, uh, others, 5.5. Uh, and prote Protestants, it's about what we got as a Christian Protestant uh, by the researches, by the churches that uh, there is a book which we... we we talked about in a pastor's meeting in Albania, it was like 9.7% of the people, even 1% non-Christian, evangelic Christian. So um, Albania right now, uh, it is the largest, the largest people of the belief there is Islam. Why I say that? is because their father and grand, grand, grandfathers, they were Muslim and they were taught by their parents. See, my father and my grand grandfather, they were told that you are a Muslim. I'll talk about more about the, the, my background as soon as I get this. So many people right now in Albania, which I said it was 2.5 million people, all the young adults, my age, they're leaving the country because the country is not doing good on, on jobs. They're not doing good on, on uh, basically uh, social, uh, in a society, no helps from the government. And the majority of the people, it depends 35 to 40% of the people, they are living in a poor and in a, uh, not many resources from the government. And the poverty 
increases little by little, almost every day. And all these people trying to hide and leave the country because they are tired of staying in Albania. And the fact is that uh, if you go to the north of Albania, you would not see many young adults like me. Only the elderly people have been left. Actually, it's a sad to say, but it, ha it, it is right now in Albania. They wanted to have a better life. They, don't, they are tired of Albania. They want to leave. Matter of fact, even the, 30, uh, the second age, which is about um, 50, 50 years old to 40 years old, they want to go to, to other countries like Italy, like Romania, like uh, um, America. Not actually, not many people would have that a chance to come to America to have a better life, you know. But they they go to other country in Greece, where is in in Germany, wherever is the better life, so they can have more incomes and have a better better life. So. Uh, I want to talk about myself and how, I mean, you would ask me, how did you become a Christian in uh, this country that is the, uh, the, main, the main belief is Islam? But as I told, as I said to you, uh, that my father was Muslim, but many of these people, they have just a name, but they don't practice. They don't go to the mosque and pray and do all these things. They just have the name because of their parents. And then that's how they were taught. Because of your family, you are Muslim. So I was raised in a Muslim family. And uh, I was two years old when my grandma got me, adopted me, as I would say. But still, I had my mom. And uh, I was at least 15, 14 years old. I met a friend, which he had, this, we went in the same school. But I didn't know that he was going to the church. He knew a little English. And... Actually, you have to forgive me for my English because, you know, I'm going to try to speak a little slower, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it uh, easy. Um, so my friend, I met him in school, and he was going to this church, and um, somehow he, he, he asked me if I would go into the church. And I said, well, you know, my parents are Muslim, and I don't, I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what they're, what's, what's their reaction to me. But as a teenager, you know, everyone likes to see and likes to discover and likes to, to try to, to, to make all these, you know, things. But I said, well, I will go. Let's, let's take a look, you know. So... <laughs> Um, I said to him, yes, I will, I will definitely come in that meeting. So it was Sunday. I went to the church, and I see all this, you know, music. And, and I said, man, this is not a place for me. I want to go from this place. It's not a good place. And uh, <laughs> so I said to myself, I said, well, you know, it's not, not a good place. So I left, and... Uh, well, he came and asked me again. He said, well, did you like it? And he says, well, I don't know if I like it or not, but, you know, it's not a place for me. But, you know, every day I would think, like, you know, even though I went just one time in the mosque and I didn't even know what was it, but it's just in, when I went in the church, I just realized that something was kind of, you know, hitting me, and I've been thinking and thinking and thinking, and now they have these meetings with a youth club, 
Okay, so I said, well, you know, how about if I go one more time? And they were, you know, my age and my friends were there and the people were there and says, well, I don't know if, if I can take a chance and go back, but uh, well, I will see and, and I will make, I'll, I will do that. And um, they were a small church and I go there and I, they, they just start to worship again, play the guitar and then keyboard. And I said, oh, they started again with the worship. <laughs> so as in that moment, in that moment, actually, I, uh, as the people were worshiping the Lord and they were crying and they were weeping, and I said, why, why they are crying? There is no reason for crying. But they, 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 they just started to, 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 to worship the Lord. And I'm there, open my eyes. And everybody's, you know, having their hands together and worship the Lord. And I'm there looking at them. They are all bowed down. The, 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 the heads bowed down and, uh, and then trying to, to, to pray. And I'm all there looking. And all of a sudden, something came in my heart. Something was touring in my spirit. And I began to do the same thing that they were doing. So in that time, I believe the Holy Spirit was touching me. And the next day, I couldn't, like, I couldn't, you know, stop thinking what, what that day meant. So one other time, the prayer time was there. And I went and I asked the pastor, can you tell me, you know, what is this about? Can you, I was kind of, you know, uh, wanting to know what's going on. Why is, why is this things going on? So I started to, uh, think and you know kind of wanted to to ask and he started to evangelize in me and he started to share with me the gospel in that day i accepted jesus as the day was passed the people would know that i was going to the church and that was the 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 most important time for me that I had the, all the bad times that people were saying bad words to me. They were saying, you are a priest now. You're becoming a Christian. You changed your faith and you did that. You did that. You're not more valuable now. You know, stay away from, it, from us. All of my friends that I had in my area, I became like an enemy to them just because I accepted Jesus. So as the time was passed and uh, I had, now I'm a follower of Christ and I go to the church and uh, even though I was uh, uh, a believer, I had this compassion and this love for Christ to be every time that they had the meeting because I believe that God was changed my life at that time. And since I was 15 years old till now, I serve the Lord. And I stand for the, that moment when he touched my heart and changed me. And I praise God about that. And I worship the Lord for what he did in my life. And after that, I, I stand and, and the pastor was asking me if I would do a Bible college for two years. And I went to the Bible college for two years to be a part of a leadership. So I took part of the leadership. And then after that, I did some mission, uh, mission uh, uh, in other, other countries. And one time that I remember when I was in the mission field, I was in Kosovo. Kosovo is the same, I would say the same belief as Albania. 
as I was helping another church in a mission, we were in a market and then I had a t-shirt saying, God, God loves you, you know, something with Jesus in, 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 in a t-shirt. But I didn't think that people would see me. Because of my skin, people would realize that I am a Muslim. Because in, in brown people, they would say that you are a Muslim. So when I had this t-shirt, this I was walking in this market because I was going to buy something. And a young fellow just stopped me and he says, do you think you're going to go in the heaven? You're going to go in the hell and you're going to be burned. And he was attacking me. And then I just looking at him and smiling. And he says, you are not worldly anymore to be on God's, you know, present and his, in his God that he was talking about. And uh, he said, you did something wrong and you changed your belief. You changed your faith. You are not good. And he was threatening me a lot. But some, in, some, in some way, somebody in the back of me came and he just, he, he, he came, the guy that was threatening me, he was fr in front of me here. And the other guy that was in the back of me, he just pushed the guy and said, let him go. And I believe that God was with me, protecting me because I stood up for what God has put it in my heart. And it's, it's, I'm not saying it's a dangerous country, but it is everywhere when you have Jesus with you, you would have all these uh, burdens and all these uh, this problems because you are in faith of Christ. So now as the time has passed, um, the church that I belong in, local church, they had planted in another church. They wanted somebody to take care of the church. And for four or five years, maybe longer than that, for five years, I've been serving God, leading that church. And we have seen people transforming by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ and accepting the Lord. Our church there right now, it's about 25 to 30 people. As I said, many young want to leave the country because of they are tired of having no jobs, no incomes, no other resources from the, from the government. And trust me, Albanians are a hard worker. And, uh, but, and they can see also the major, I would say the majority of people also, I, and I understand that they, they have to have the education to have a, a better job. But not many people would have a education to have a better job in Albania. So um, right now, what we do in our church, uh, as we serve the Lord, we also, we help the people by uh, providing them wheelchairs. Also, we help the people by providing supply, also uh, medical, uh, medical care, like medical if they don't have uh, in money. So we're just trying to, to help them a little bit. We can do what we have. We can go further than, than that. Also, we do some little food packs for the people, for the poor, because the church that is located right, uh, in, in, in that area, many, many families live in a poverty, like widows, like elderly people, uh, kids that has been left from their parents, not taking care of it. We can provide also books, for the schools and and that means something to their life we can do all these little things by giving them something that they can start on and go on 
So that's our church there, what we do as a ministry, and that's how we try to do our best we can by the grace of God and uses us. As I said, our church, we don't have too many people, but what we have, uh, it's value because they can, uh, they trust the Lord and they can have the Lord in their life. Now in Albania, just 2019, just before I was preparing to come to, to, to America in 2020, something really bad happened. And I don't know if you were aware of that because uh, in Albania, it happens in the earthquake 2019, November 26, and was hit it. Um, Oops. It's not working. <laughs> and it's hit it by 6.5 uh, magnitude. Yeah was hit by 6.5 magnitude. And actually in that day, 26th of November, I was talking with my friend here in America and I was awake about, I was like 3, 3.30, in the mor 3.30 in the morning because it's, we are six hours uh, behind of Albania. So uh, if it is one o'clock here, there is like uh, seven o'clock there. Um, in that time, uh, I was talking and uh, in 3.30, and I just felt a little shake in that time. And my wife said, oh, did you, did you feel it? And I says, yes, but it was very, very small. It didn't, no problem. You know. No, no, no worried about, don't worry about. So in about, in about 20, 20 minutes after, in about 4 o'clock, it started to shake 59 seconds. We are, I don't know, I mean, I, I, was God, was God's hands that was protecting my family in our, in our house. And just about 1,000 feet nearby my, my place, across to, across to my, my place, my house, there was a, ho a house with three floors were just tore down inside, in the ground. And I was trying to open the doors and my kids were all scared about. And I've got three kids, nine, seven, and two. And we, we were, I thought we were dying. Honestly, we were dying. 59 seconds. And the, 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 the house was shaking up and down and all, all the time. And I could hear buildings were touring down. It was, I can't believe it. I was alive. I had God's protection. So many people actually died and which you're going to see the video, actually, some of the picture that uh, I have put it there. But many people died. It was like, uh, got hurt also. But there were 52 people died, actually. One of the members from our church lost 11 people. Matter of fact, he lost his wife, too. Just before, actually, that uh, we would have in the, the, the service, his wife told her husband, he says, make sure you go to the church. She warned him, go to the church. And she was a strong believer. Then she passed away. And her husband lost 11 people by this earthquake. But... As I was praying, God has put in, in, in my heart a verse from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has 
not given us the spirit of fear, but of the power and love and sound mind. You know, all these people were getting scared and they left the city. The city was empty. Everybody got all the cars and everything, all the clothing they were living. And my wife was saying, Alban, we want, we want to leave. We can't stay here. And after that was like a thousand shockings uh, after the earthquake, the big earthquake. We have to leave. My daughter could not go into the house because of the earthquake. Many people, many kids got hurt. And kids were dying too. In the morning, three, it was like four o'clock in the morning. Everybody was sleeping. And this earthquake came in their life. And now, as a minister, as a, as a leader of the church, I was trying to kind of share with them the love of Christ. But I said, Lord, how can I go where they lost their family? They lost the hope. They lost life. Everything that they built, built it in, in, in years, they saved, was destroyed. Even though the government are trying to build their homes and they're trying. But still, they lost everything. Can you imagine you lost, lose everything you have in your life? That's what it happens to Albanians. And, you know, my daughter was saying, I don't want to go into anymore in the house. I'll, I'll, I'll stay out. You know, I was ready to take like a psychologist and something like, you know, to, to just, to, you know, I, I wasn't kind of sure if I could talk to my daughter too. You know, she was very scared. But God gave us this verse that the spirit of the Lord is in us. That it gives us a power to stand and go further. Even though the church has got all together and pray for our country and pray for all the cities and pray for the people that got hurt and lost everything. As the time was gotten, you know, getting healed by this, now I was preparing and got my ticket and I was ready to come to America, trying to meet lots of friends and, you know, talk about this. COVID came. I mean, from another strange thing came another strange thing <laughs> in Albania. <laughs> now everybody was locked down and no one could go outside because of the COVID. So in this country, which is the poverty, now they were locked down for six months Four months. How in this world they're going to find food? Water. So people who were living houses and their parents were left. Elderly people were being left alone. And they were afraid not to, 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 to help no one. Matter of fact, I was thinking, like, well, if I go out... How can I help? Because you don't know how to help also. Because you were being like, you know, you were being afraid to go because of the COVID. <laughs> and I was thinking what I said, I've been praying about and asking God, Lord, give me a sign. Give me something I could, I could go and help these people that have been left alone. So as I was praying, God gave me a verse from Psalm 91, verse 7, and says, A thousand shall fall in thy side, and ten thousand in the right hand, but it not shall come to nigh thee. You know, we may think about all these things, and this strange thing came, but we stay, I heard this, this, what God was speaking to me, and I saw this verse, and I said, I will stand for what God is saying. So when I, when I kind of 
got up, I talked to my people in the church, and I said, I'm going for it. I'm going to help those poor people. I know they are locked down. So I, I got up and I talked to the police station. I called them and I, I said, sir, we have, you know, some food packs. So I wanted to get them to the church, to my people there, to our people. Matter of fact, one of the police said, well, can you give me a pack of food? <laughs> I said, you know, I am going to help these people. As I was sharing all these food packs in that certain area that we are located, a fellow came, he was elder, and, uh, and he said, he was thinking, and he was seeing me, and I was sharing the food packs to the people. And as he was watching me, he was thinking that if I go there, I may take something. So as he was walking, and a lot of people were nearby my, my, my car as I was delivering the food for the people because they were saying that the government haven't sh- seen us for, for like a month. We did what we can. So this fellow comes and he talked to me and he's, I was ready to give him the food packs. And, I, and he said, sir, I don't want food packs. He says, he says, well, it's for you. He says, well, I need something else. And he says, what? what, what can, how can I help you? He says, I need some medication for my wife. It just hit my heart. And I said, sir, I can't promise you. I don't know if I can help you, but I will make sure come back to you. And if I have it, I will give it to you. So as the time was passed and something came on and God provides, and I went back to the guy and I said, sir, you asked me if I could buy the medication for your wife. Give me the prescription and I'll buy it. He was so happy that he could have the medication for his wife. And now he told me, he knows, uh, he knows a little language uh, about like English, Greek, and, and he said, and his background is a Muslim, but that's what he said, the best place to go and visit, not because I was giving him something, but because of, from his heart, he says the best place to visit is the church and that it makes me happy and now he's becoming a member of our church there so actually that's what we do Um, we are a small church and uh, sometimes what we do we do mission field we go and help people maybe they're not they're not christians but we do help and try to reach the people by giving them something they can eat, something they can have. And there is lots of needs actually that we can try and help people there, but we can do what we have with everyone. So our, um, our mission, I and my wife and the children, also the part of the leadership there is that our goal and our hearts are to show the people that unconditioned love and helping them to know Jesus Christ. Actually, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Paul is writing, he says, the, you are the only Bible people can read. And that's what we want to That's what we want to try to do so they can see the word of God through us, the love of God through us by helping them and giving them the help. So brothers and sisters, this is something that I just shared. And I want to thank you very much for this opportunity and the invitation you've given me for, to share this. 
um, you will see a video that my brother there is going to show. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, uh, you will see the reality there. And also in the, in the end of this video, I would like you to uh, also to see a picture of my contact if you want to send me an email or if you want to have my contact uh, just to give you a, a briefly report and something that's what is happening in Albania and that will be nice also to have you um, also in contact and speak to you. I'm hoping to come back uh, next year because I'm leaving next month which is going to be in the beginning of the August and I thank you very, very much for the hospitality that uh, you have given me here and uh, being part of one of the service here. And hopefully I'll be back. And uh, thank you very much for all your invitation. Thank you. You are the word at the beginning, one with God. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is You sing
grace and for your sufficiency and, and, and your provision. We just pray that this, this, um, this ministry of Pastor Albans, that you would continue to grow it. And we know its beginnings were, were very humble and very simple. It was just a simple, how can I help, Lord? And it's, a, it's an inspiration um, to us also being, being a small congregation, that really God can do great things, even in small places, if we would simply just be willing to ask, Lord, how can I help? So, Father, we just um, ask you to continue to bless this ministry, bless our church. 
Continue to bless that mission field, Father, that, that we may go out there and continue to do a work according to your will and your purpose. Bless us now and bless us always. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much.